Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is part one of lesson 2.2. In this video, we're going to focus on writing definitions as conditional statements. So a conditional statement is a logical statement that has two parts to it. The first part is a hypothesis and the second part is a conclusion. So if we're looking at this statement down below, which says, if it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky. The hypothesis is the if portion of the statement and the conclusion is the then portion of the statement. Now our statements aren't always going to be written in that if-then form, so it's an important skill to be able to take a statement and rewrite it in that if-then conditional statement form. So if we're going to go about that, first thing we need to do is identify our hypothesis and then identify our conclusion. So we're looking at this statement that says all birds have feathers. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it and rewrite it in if-then form. So the first thing I need to identify is my hypothesis. And in this one, my hypothesis is that we're going to be dealing with a bird. And then because we're dealing with a bird, the conclusion would be that it has feathers. So what we want to do is take this and write it in that if-then form. And when we do that, we might have to do a little bit of rewording or changing how things are written. So looking at this hypothesis piece, okay, it says all birds right now. But if we start writing that out in if-then form, I would change it to say if an animal is a bird, so that takes care of our hypothesis portion of this statement. Then we need to look at that conclusion portion where it says it's going to have feathers. And again, we might have to reword this. So if an animal is a bird, then, because we're writing this in if-then form, it has feathers. So there's our statement rewritten in if-then form. If we look at this next one down below, it says two angles are supplementary if they are a linear pair. Again, when we're working on this one, we need to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. Now this one's a little bit out of order. I actually see an if on the end. So I'm gonna make that my hypothesis for this conditional statement. If we're dealing with angles that are a linear pair, then the conclusion would be the other portion so that these two angles are going to be supplementary. And again, as we rewrite this, we might have to reword it a little bit. So we're looking at that hypothesis piece where it says, if they are a linear pair, well, we don't really know what they is yet, so I would change it to say, if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So there's our statement rewritten in if-then form. When we're dealing with these logical statements, there's a few different things that we can do with them. And the first one is a negation. And the negation of a statement is the opposite of the original statement. And the easiest way to negate a statement is to add either a no or maybe a not to the statement. That would make it say the opposite of what it originally said. So if we look at this first statement, it says the ball is red. So its negation would say that the ball is not red. Okay, By adding that not, it changed this to its opposite. If we look at our next statement, it says the cat is not black. Well, this one already has a not in it. So if we're going to negate that one, we would just take it out in order to get the opposite. So its negation would say that the cat is black. The next thing we could do is we could write out something called the converse of a conditional statement. So when we're writing out a converse, what we're going to do is exchange the if and then portions of our statement. So if we're looking at this first statement, it says, if it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky. So in order to write out this converse, we're going to flip the order on the if and then parts. We still want to start off with an if. But now we're going to take that second portion where it says there are clouds in the sky. So this would say if there are clouds in the sky. Then our conclusion, we're going to grab that original if piece that says it is raining. So then it is raining. And that's the converse of our original statements. We switched the if and then pieces around. Taking a look at this next one, it says, if you study, then you will do well in school. So again, we're going to change the if and then pieces around. So if you do well in school, 
then our conclusion is that you study. So again, there's our converse of the original statement with the if and thens switched around. The next thing we can write out is the inverse of a conditional statement, and what that does is it negates the if and the then pieces of our statement. And remember we said in order to negate something, one of the easiest ways to do it is to put a not in the statement. So if we're looking at this first one, it says, if it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky. We're not going to change the order on this, we're just going to negate it. So I'm going to add that not in there. So if it is not raining, then our conclusion is that there are not clouds in the sky. And that's the inverse of the original statement because we negated the if and the then portion of our statement. If you look at this next one, same thing. It says, if you study, then you will do well in school. So again, we're going to negate this. So if you don't study, then our conclusion is that you won't do well in school. And there's the negation of that statement because we added a couple of negating pieces, the don't and the won't. The last thing we're going to write out is called the contrapositive. And this one's a little bit more involved because there's two pieces to it. The first thing we're going to do is write out the converse of the statement where we flip the if and then pieces around and then we're going to negate each piece. So we've got this same first statement, if it is raining then there are clouds in the sky. We already did the converse of this one earlier and it said if there are clouds in the sky then it is raining. But what we're going to do now is take that converse and negate it. So this would say if there are not clouds in the sky then it is not raining. So there's our contrapositive. We flipped the if and then portions around and we negated it. Our last one is if you study then you will do well in school. So again we're going to do the converse where we flip the if and then around and then we're going to negate it. So we would say if you don't do well in school then you don't study. And again, there's our contrapositive. We flipped the if and then around and we negated it. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.